Yep, I am Tom, not Dan. And that other guy that you were listening to, forget everything that he said, because I'm going to tell you what Tom really says. <laughs> um, OK, so I'm going to talk to you about personal projects, um, and kind of especially one of, my, um, one of my big projects that I've done called When I'm a Dad. Um, uh, I don't have the pedigree of Dan or Mary Lou. I'm only 21. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of here. I've just graduated from uni, so don't take anything I say too literally. I'm just going to try and teach you what I think I know, but that's not much. Um, OK, so that was me uh, last year. Um, I'm a multidisciplined art director. Um, uh, I don't know, I've worked as an illustrator, logo designer, filmmaker. I don't really know what I am, I just kind of do stuff that I think is fun. Uh, my body clock is completely fucked. Um, I flew back from Thailand this morning and I haven't slept for two days, so if I do collapse, sorry. <laughs> um, but, okay, so first I'm going to talk to you um, kind of something that I believe in quite strongly is that work that work looks like work is boring. Um, the whole um, talk is about personal projects. But um, as soon as you graduate, you kind of, you spend three years working really, really hard. And then all of a sudden, you're like, okay, great, I got this portfolio. But it's the same as everybody else's that has graduated. It's the same as me. I've, I, I don't put it online, but I have the same portfolio as everybody else in my class. And it's like, Okay, right, everybody in agencies has seen the same work. It all kind of blends together into this mesh. How can you stand out a bit more? How can you do something um, that gets better? How do you get remembered? Uh, I'd say personality. And how's the best way to show your personality is through your work. Nobody wants to read an about page for God knows how long to understand you. If you can understand somebody through their work, and get a bit of sense what they are, then um, that's a lot better. So, my crappily prepared written little sheet. <laughs> um, there's a couple of little projects that I kind of thought were kind of fun um, when I was doing a little bit of research for this. Um, but literally, anything you like. Like, if you're into football, like I am hugely, uh, and illustration, just do some illustration stuff. You don't know where it will go. If, if you're into traveling and you like a bit of type, do some type about where you go traveling. If you're into 3D art because you've always really wanted to try 3D art, which is the bottom left, it just, just try it. Like, and if you love shitting, then do a project about <laughs> the toilets of London. Because, you know, why not? People remember that. People don't remember like a, a branding project. People remember you for your little toilet um, Instagram page. Um, and yeah, so that's the kind of little setup. And now I'm going to kind of walk you through my own little story um, of uh, when I'm a dad. Um, it is a storybook. But um, OK, so a little bit of context. I was in second year, um, second year course, creative advertising at Lincoln. The tutors were all kind of telling me, Tom, don't enter DNAD. Tom, um, the course has got too much for you to do. Don't, don't, don't spend your time doing this. Do, do the coursework. And then you, in third year, you can enter the NAD um, and do all the stuff you want. And for me, I didn't want to do it. I, I, <laughs> I didn't want to listen to them. I was literally like, I really want to just practice illustration and get a project that um, I think is quite good. So I found the We Transfer Brief last year, which was basically to envisage yourself in 10 years' time. And I don't know, I thought to myself, I, was, you know, I did the whole brainstorming thing, and kind of, in the end, I just brought it down to what would I really want to be in 10 years' time? What would be the one kind of thing? And I just kind of thought, well, why not be a dad? Uh, that, that, yeah, and <laughs> that, coming with that, there's a lot of emotion attached to that. And I don't know, I, I'm not deceiving, but I, I wanted to play off that. I, I mean, some people call me the womb melter after I made this project. <laughs> but I, I, I don't know. I wanted to get as much emotion into this project as possible, because I knew then that, that's, how, that's how it can spread further. Um, so I decided to uh, illustrate all the things that I wanted to do when I'm a dad in this book. 
So little random examples, monster in a little bed, where it lived long. Half of this is me practicing illustration. The other half is you know, this kid's book that I want to read to my kid um, when I'm older. Um, just, again, practicing illustration and um, you know, funny little things that I thought, you know, you know that'd be cool. Um, yep, and I didn't really want to stop there. OK, I've got this book. Great. Oh, let's throw it into DNAD. Let's see if it gets somewhere. No. Why don't we do something else? I've, I like websites. Um, so I made this little website, whenimadad.com, and basically you can make vowels um, for when you do become a dad. Uh, you can go now if you want. Probably not in the talk, but maybe later. I don't know. Um, but yeah, basically there's just a lot of different fatherly vows that you can make on that. Um, so I had kind of the book, the website already, and then, uh, right, should I submit that to DNAD or is that not enough? And I kind of decided, well, how do I generate as much hype about this project as possible? Because then, I say, it's not a fail-safe way of winning, but if you can generate a lot of hype on a project, then it shows that people like it. So I found every single dad blog. I found all the parenting pages, all the Facebook pages, anything to do with anything that would kind of appreciate my project. And I sent it to them. I sent it you know, everywhere. Um, and people started picking it up. I actually almost, um, the website got some like 90,000 views. Um, and you know, I got invited to a dad podcast. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm actually a member of the National Fatherhood Institute, and I'm not a father, so <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Um, and yeah, kind of from this project, um, you know, I got a black pencil and a European Design Student of the Year. And then from that, I kind of got commissioned for illustrations for Visa. So I don't have anything up. I should have really done more. Um, I got commissioned illustrations for Visa, and I don't know, this whole kind of whirlwind about when I'm a dad was like kind of started, and I was like, oh crap, I need to sell this book now. So now it's um, on the back burner. When I do become a dad, I will release this full good book that I can sell um, on the side. But okay, that was a little kind of side story about a personal project that I've done, um, and kind of what I want to talk about. Is, is kind of random crappy lessons that I think could, um, oops, a bit late, could work um, for you guys or just to, just to apply um, into your life. So the first kind of lesson I learned when I'm doing a project is choose your own trousers. Now, this has a little bit of a story to it. Um, so I'm half Finnish and I have a Finnish mum. And when I was like 15, 16, uh, she'd take me shopping to TK Maxx. And she'd <laughs> sit over the other side of the, um, sit over the store looking through trousers for me when I was looking at shirts or something. And she'd pick them up, Tommy, what about these ones, these ones? And everybody in the store would look around, look at me. I'd be red faced, like, oh my God, mum, why are you doing that? Um, and instantly, anything that she said or anything that she showed me, even if they were good, I'd say no, because they, she picked them. And I think that's a really key lesson when you're choosing a personal project is that you have to pick it. It has to be yours. You have to, nobody can tell you to do a personal project about, I don't know, your shoes or something. You know, nobody can tell you to do something. You have to pick it. And as soon as you do that, it's your baby. It's your soul. It's your, you have this pressure to make it good. Um, and that's. Uh, that's, that's, that's one of the uh, key lessons that I think is important. And you know, I can see kind of some people thinking, you know, that's not really a lesson that you can choose your own trousers right down in a notebook. But um, yeah, along those lines. Um, and so kind of a second kind of thing that I go on, and I believe in strongly, is that the internet is unbelievable for sharing work. Like people. It annoys me so much when somebody spends like three months on a project and uploads it to Behance on a Sunday night um, and, and just does that. Literally does nothing else with it. There's um, so much you can do with a project. So whenever I make a project, for example, I come up with like a launch plan um, of where I could send this 
where, who's going to see it, where I could send it. So say it was, I don't know, a type portrait of homeless people in London, say. Um, who's going to be interested in that? Well, there's about, I don't know, six, seven huge homeless charities that I'm sure I could send it to. Um, and then, you know, loads of other interesting places around London and design blogs that you can also send it to to get that extra bit of exposure on your work. So literally, I'd, I'd always spend like two or three days just absolutely throwing it, like, hey, check out this project. I know I don't have much time, but you know, um, check it out. Sh feel free to share it with your followers or something like that. And more often than not, they'll probably say no or maybe not. But you never know where it will lead. Um, and kind of a little weird thing that I've kind of picked up over the time is what is the best time to post your project online? Like, I, it almost seems like common sense not to post it a Sunday at 3 a.m. But people do that, and it's like, because we live in like kind of this timeline age, and as soon as you post it when nobody's online, it kind of gets shoved down the timeline, shoved down the timeline. Um, and then by the time people are online, your work's going to be at the bottom, and nobody's going to see it. So a little rule that I go by is Tuesday or Wednesday, 12 p.m. to 5 p.m., that is the most chance you will have of your project succeeding on like Behance or you know, all these social media platforms that use timelines. Um, it's not just me making it up. There is gonna, I've researched it online and stuff, and there is a bit of science behind it. Um, but yeah, there's that. Um, and then kind of one final little tip, or I don't really know, um, is why Essentially, I know these are so ambiguous, but why would you view somebody else's project? Give, like, I can look at all of your work, and OK, it can just be the work, but why don't you give me something else to view, uh, see from it? So is it a downloadable phone background, downloadable desktop background? Is it a, if it's a font, give me a free version. Give me something in the work that I can actually engage with, something like a poster that I can actually um, you know, buy or something like that. So many people just put it online and then, right, where are my likes? Well, what's going to happen? No, you've got to, like, it's crazy. I made a free font, and it's um, crazy how many commission work I've had back just from a free font that I uploaded online, and people just shared because it was free. Um, and yeah, uh, that is, and this is, this is kind of the biggest thing I live by. Time is not an excuse. You literally. Somebody here could have made um, the project that got them into their favorite agency in the time I did this talk. I guarantee it. Somebody here could have done that. Um, I don't know. Be clever. Make the world smile. And um, yeah, that's me. Thank you. <laughs> mm,